Eagles. Down, but he's gonna get gravity fielded. No, he wasted enough time inside that he didn't. But Ku is able to assess the fight very well. Get themselves back in after choosing the right target. Bangy, flag, and drag away. Doesn't look like Ku has any more priority targets. They lose two, however, in that fight from splitting up so much in the beginning. Marin teleported in a good two or three seconds before Smep made his presence known in that team fight, and that's the reason that SKT ends up getting a two for one. Because a fight in which Bang gets caught at the beginning should almost never lead to an SKT two for one. Exactly. But they do lose the turret afterwards because some nice damage was returned by Ku Tigers. Really interesting chain of events. Wolf goes in. Bang shooting somebody else, they still get out alive. However, they can turn situations around so fast to be in their favor and make it work. Still just repairing the lanes now because that wasn't the best of situations they came out of. Coming up on 30 minutes here. These games are definitely going longer than SKT's average, so they have to put a little more effort in to this mid-game area, where, as we say, Ku should be shining. Sadly for Ku Tigers, Smep had to use ulti, oh sorry, teleport yeah. again. So now he's no longer on the bottom side. You can no longer make that Fiora Shen play very easily because you will you will lose all your pressure on Baron as you can then start it. So the whole setup for Ku Tigers with having that 1v1 just keeps getting delayed again and again and again. And Smep really has been struggling to do a whole lot with that early lead he got because he's constantly being put into team fights. So much of split pushing is about forcing the enemy team into decisions and half the reason it works is because it's so difficult to coordinate everyone to do exactly the right thing and find the openings. But SKT has been the best team at Worlds this year as well as having some of the best players and I think that teamwork is one of the things that's stopping the split push from being so effective aside from Smev being a little bit slow on the uptake in some of his plays. And we can't really blame Ku Tigers for, for looking at that last fight and saying, oh, we can catch the AD carry, we should go for it. But normally that's not what they wanted to do. They wanted to just have control of the Baron River and wait for Smith to make a play one versus one against Marin. They were gonna wait for him because yeah. he was supposed to be the strong member here, the guy who could win his lane consistently, where every time there's a team fight, it's more 50-50 between the teams here. So their safe play was gonna be Smith making a move with Shen ulti. That didn't happen because obviously they saw Bang a little bit out of position, they went for it, but that was basically what SKT wanted. Because now we have this situation again where two top laners are holding each other. It's very difficult for Putin to make that play because they have no TP. So the, how do they capitalize? It's going to be very difficult, especially with Faker having home guard and Whimsy to get himself back out to the lanes, instantly glitter lancing, pushing any of Ku's work back while he was in base and already down the mid lane. It's not going to be Smeb diving Marin under his turret, so Smeb starts to back off, and Faker was making a roam down. But the movement of Smeb says, I'm an award, let's not go for that. Still focused to the mid lane. One minute on to Dragon, both teams trying to just pull ultimates, pull flashes or summoner spells out of each other here before it happens. We're absolutely seeing a game of back and forth right here. Anytime someone leaves to go and push a side lane, you're gonna see a small window of pressure for the opponent. And anytime SKT shows That's people big. in the mid lane, Smeb will try and go aggressively end up getting the equalizer out there yeah. for very low cost. 97 second cooldown on the equalizer from Marin. That's one of the reasons Rumble is sitting and holding a lane so it can be a bit annoying for him if you have to use ulti yep. due to the long cooldown. This does give an opening for Kutaius. You can see how they're instantly moving in now. Sit around Baron and say, we want to fight now because you have no ulti on your Dangerous. Rumble. With the distortion enchant for Marin, he has a faster teleport cooldown for Smep. So even though they used it on the same fight, Marin's teleport's actually up in a couple of seconds right here. And that makes it much less safe for Ku to actually be faking this Baron. Something we saw him focus in game one. Marin is definitely a huge playmaker on this Rumble. We saw him come from a, uh, a screen off. Engage oh in one of the bottom fights. Who's going to start? There's no vision here for SKT. If SKT goes in, it can actually be a 5v4. Yeah, because this is too risky. To teleport. I don't think Koku knows the teleport's up. Now they do. Marin is going to be coming in. They will not be able to turn and fight this with the damage of Baron in their favor. They just back off completely. Here's the big window, though, because this time they forced the teleport without forcing the teleport on the other side. So that's a big win for yes. Ku, actually. Not overcommitting to the Baron and getting the split push turret. Huge move. The key thing for Ku Tigers was the fact that Faker got recalled. He was back in base. One other member I didn't get to see who was also running from the fountain. So SKT, even though they had five members, they couldn't hard They're engage. They're going back again. 
They're going back. They have the pink ward, but they do not clear the one in the back of the pit. They are trying to run SKT around yes. the map. And soon, Smeb will have his teleport, but he's drawn Marin up right here. So it's the Rek'Sai, Shen, and the teleport advantage all working in conjunction with the Dragon and Baron being up at once. This is filled with action right Definitely by the book teleport play, if you will, gentlemen. This would be perfect for Ku to get a giant fight if SKT bunches up in this one. Marin, or Smeb rather, keeping an eye on the team. Sm Marin already had to go back. But the teleport discrepancy actually will not be worked just yet by Ku. We have Hojin going back, but he can all back in. And if you're SKT, you have to break this cycle somehow by making an aggressive play or killing one leg of the split push. But at the moment, Ku isn't letting them recover. If anything, this leads to a cataclysmic fight at the Baron Pit. There's no wards behind SKT. There's a no real way for Smith to get a flank. He's just sitting in the lane. He's waiting for SKT to overcommit to a fight knowing that Rumble isn't there. But you're still at that point where Fiora can duel everyone, so she can safely sit and stay even, at least with Marin, just clear the wave every single time, wait for something. I would want to see a ward from Kutai who's behind this Baron, so there's a way for Smith to TP in and get a flank, and you can instantly try and go for Bang. SKT as yeah. well, kind of baiting the Baron out. They push On down the towards Baron. Dragon to make sure that Ku goes into it. SKT now approaching. Baron's going to be down to about 4,700 HP. That's the in from Wolf. Stops up three members. Slicing Maelstrom goes down, but it's not really hitting anybody. Or stunning, stunning the targets it needs. Faker is going to be able to take down Prey. The Baron still stands at 2,300 HP. Smab is forced to flash out of this one. This That's is the Baron they were waiting for, but SKT danced it out perfectly. The laser across. It's going to be going to Bengi. SKT gets Baron for a second game in a row, and now they're really going to be able to work the lane. But what's the point in just teleporting your top laner straight into the Baron pit? Oh, oh that was one kill. Takes him down. It's going to be the fight. This is an easy kill for Faker here. Little bit of glitter. Glitter gets everywhere, and it takes down Kuro. 45 seconds on the clock. They're getting longer. Smeb may be able to pick up Dragon, but it, it's a consolation prize at this point. Also, when Smeb teleports inside that pit, I think they were trying to do it a little bit undetected, but it, Marin was able to get an equalizer oh, no in that way. pit, which made it dangerous. Bengi Smite is up, so thanks for the help, Smeb. Thank you very much, says SKT. Two what tigers. It doesn't look like they want to stop either. They see Smeb is low on mana. He's not going to have any potential to fight. Gorilla not doing anything. But you can see how long it's been since they've been in each other's jungles. New wards finally being placed. Yeah. Nobody had deep vision before that whole fight. This obviously completely shuts down the split push here, but Koo Tiger simply got too greedy. They didn't want to wait any longer. They're like, let's just try and burst down the Baron, TP in here with all five guys, and just destroy the Baron as fast as possible before Marin shows up. But now you're just caught in here, so suddenly getting to the AD carry is almost impossible, and he's the guy you want to aim for if you look at what SKT is brought here on the board. So look at Bang. He's just sitting, shooting away all he wants, and they are caught Five guys taking damage from Baron at the same time. Also, the way SKT engaged that fight with Wolf going in with the Unbreakable Will, the Baron was only hitting Ku, even though the team fight was taking pay place yeah. in the Baron pit. The dive that Smev tried to do outwardly maybe would have been best served to just kill frontline to backline. He tried to assassinate through the team of SKT, which is almost never going to work. Yeah. Impatience is the word I would use from Ku right there. It was supposed to be start Baron, four members from SKT yeah. move in, TP in behind him, like flash torn from the Shin onto Bang and try and destroy him as fast as possible, or maybe the Lulu, and then suddenly you have a good fight going for yourself instead of being caught in that pit. Just a little bit too greedy from Ku Tigers. It cost him in game one, it costing him again here in game two. Smev not really respecting the members around him. He's just going for a little fight. Damage onto both Bengi and Wolf. Looks like they may want to commit here. They have good vision, but it's being cleared out. Double wards go down. The ward war definitely won by SKT here inside Aku's jungle. And they're so split up. They can't really engage if they want to. A lot being done in defense. Smeb actually puts himself in a spot oh. where he dies. That's a double kill for Bengi. They're not stopping. Bang jumps over the wall for another kill. And it looks like it's going to be an ace in the base. 22 to 13. When SKT takes over, they start to steamroll. And just like that, they still have Baron buff. And Marin's going to grab the minions he actually still has equalizer he uses that to clear the minions skt just like that it's over the game is open for anybody to take moments later skt wins a few fights and it is all theirs for the taking the first nexus turret goes down here in game two that's the second one sk telecom t1 are one win away from being your two-time world champions Another game for SKT, where they punish you, they take the Baron, and they walk straight down and finish the game. Nine games so far at Worlds, SKT finished with the Baron buff on them.
And Koo Tigers has had the whole setup for such a long time. And it gets so scary for Koo Tigers now. This was the game where Marin and Bangi made the big mistake early in the game, and then made another mistake by not changing their play style. This breaks if you. If there was a game to it win does. or get back into the series, it was this one. And Koo needs to prevent being broken by SKT. We see such a big difference just in shot calling, though, between the teams. The way Koo Tigers are set up in the early game are like, oh, we're winning 1v1 top lane. Fiora is having a great start, a level above the rumble. Keep playing around. Do we have to shoot? We picked it early on because we want to split push. And then they keep joining in for fights with this teleport from Fiora. So she loses all her pressure in the mid game. Late game, they have that one opportunity where Rumble had no ulti. They set it up really well. And what do they do? They greet for the Baron. They rush in, try and five man, just take it down as fast as possible.